My girlfriend, 25 female, asked me, 35 male, to unfollow IG models, so I asked her to unfollow bodybuilders. For clarification, we are not talking about famous models or bodybuilders. We are talking about amateur hobbyists. I say this without judgment, but for context. So the other day, she sent me a screenshot of a model she thought was sketchy. Her worry was that her family and friends might see some of the models I follow and would think I'm a creep or something. She made a decent point, so I went ahead and unfollowed several accounts without any argument. A few hours later, I remembered that she followed a lot of amateur male bodybuilders that my family might be uncomfortable with. I sent her some screenshots and said, if I unfollowed models, she should unfollow bodybuilders. After all, what's the difference between a guy posing in a thong and a woman posing in a thong? If one is a sport, the other one is an art, in my opinion. Anyway, she got immediately defensive and said I'm always going tit for tat, then called me insane for comparing the two. I disagreed and told her that my family would view the bodybuilders like hers would view the models. The conclusion that my family might draw is that she's attracted to bodybuilders and I look nothing like a bodybuilder. She looks, and has pics, that look way closer to a model than I look to a bodybuilder. For some additional context, the reason I follow models is because I work in video and have worked with some, not all of them before. I also follow male models. She has no professional reason to follow the male bodybuilders. She has never competed or went to a competition and follows zero female bodybuilders. In fact, she says the reason she follows them is because they found her IG on dating apps when she was single and she just followed back. As if that's supposed to make me feel any better. After a long argument, she still thinks I'm wrong to compare her request to mine. I can't force her to remove anyone and I'm not going to break up with her over this, but I feel disrespected and it hurts. How should I handle the situation? Am I wrong and I just can't see it? I just want to clarify one thing because there have been some comments wondering why someone my age has an Instagram in the first place. This is a professional account and my username is the name of my small video production company. I don't post anything personal and only post about once every month. Her account is a personal account and posts almost daily. You shouldn't ask someone to do something if you're not willing to do it yourself. Simple. And second, you're following people due to your little profession and you're willing to unfollow them. Well, on the other hand, she follows bodybuilders because they found her on a dating app where obviously they were attracted to her. Like, they are not the same. Am I wrong for not paying for the full amount for a family-style dinner where I only ate bread? My wife and I are both vegan, but we don't make a big deal out of it. We don't judge others for their choices and we don't expect them to accommodate us. We usually just find something we can eat wherever we go or eat beforehand if we know the options are limited. One of my friends invited us to his birthday dinner at a restaurant in Brooklyn. He said it was a last minute thing and he didn't have time to make reservations. So we just had to show up and hope for the best. We checked the menu online and saw that there were not many vegan options except for chips and guacamole, hummus and bread. We decided to eat a snack at home and then order drinks and appetizers at the restaurant. We also have been tight with money lately because of some medical expenses. So we didn't want to spend too much on food we couldn't eat anyways. When we got to the restaurant, we found out that they were doing it all family style and splitting the bill evenly among everyone. There were about 15 people in our group and they ordered a lot of food most of which was meat or cheese based the only thing we could eat was the bread so we just had a couple of slices each and two beers each at the end of the night my friend sent me a venmo request for 120 for our share of the dinner i was shocked by the amount since our four drinks were only 32 dollars plus tip so about 40 dollars I texted him back and explained that we didn't know it was going to be family style and that we only had the beers and some bread. I said I would send him 60 to cover our drinks and a bit extra for the bread. He got angry and said that we should have told him we were vegan and that it was rude to not participate in the family style dinner. He said that everyone else paid their fair share and that we were being cheap and selfish. He said that he expected us to pay the full amount. The decision to make it a family style meal was done last second too because the restaurant had no idea a party of 15 was showing up. Otherwise, we could have split the bill per party and been fine. I don't think we did anything wrong. We didn't ask for any special treatment. We didn't complain about the food. We just ate what we could and tried to have a good time. We also didn't want to make a scene or cause any drama by announcing our dietary preferences. We thought $60 was more than enough for what we consumed, and we didn't want to pay for food we didn't eat. So, am I the asshole? Okay, your friends are not friends because they didn't even know you are vegan. What kind of friend is that? You're paying $120 for yeast! You just eat yeast and flour. Look, I'm not trying to poo-poo on anybody's dreams, but sometimes when my friends find out I had farm animals growing up, they go, oh, that sounds amazing. My dream is to live on a self-sustaining farm. And I think that's an admirable 
goal. But I always think, no, you don't. Farming is not for everybody. It was not for me. I think a lot of the fantasy is, oh, I will pet cow and eat fruit that grows on my own property. And I will sit in meadow and listen to music and watch clouds. And I got to do that a lot. And it was great growing up. But the reality of it was I was dirty most of the time because the animals need cared for all day long, multiple times a day. And they poop so much. There's so much poop. And you'll get hay in your bra and it will stab you. And if you have a lot of animals, some of them are bound to get sick sometimes, just like people do. One time we went out to the chicken coop and one of our hens was just paralyzed in half the body. Speaking of chickens, to have poultry or outdoor cats is to be at war with raccoons. And raccoons are psychopaths. They're cute, but they're, they, they will do horrid, unnatural, heinous things to your animals. Every morning I wake up and think about how grateful I am that raccoons are not human-sized. If I had to live in a world with velociraptors or human-sized raccoons, I would choose the dinosaurs. Again, I think farming is great and I wish everybody did it, but I won't, it's not for me. It's exhausting and it's 24 seven and we didn't have a self-sustaining farm. We didn't even have a farm. We just had farm animals and it, it's a lot. You have to be insanely consistent. You don't get days off because the animals don't know if it's a Saturday or if it's Christmas and if, if they they don't get their food sometimes they'll just leave the property they'll just bust out of their fence and be gone then you end up sprinting down the road with a bucket full of grain and a halter to make sure that your pot roast doesn't get hit by a car one time our pig bullied her way past my brother when he went in to feed her and he chased her down the road but he didn't grab a halter or anything or a rope and so he took off his shirt and he tried to, <laughs> he tried to dress the pig in his shirt so he could use the shirt as a harness to, to guide her back to the property and our neighbors called us because they saw my brother trying to wrestle a t-shirt on onto a pig. Am I wrong for pretending not to know Japanese and making a kid cry? I, 20 female, am an English teacher in Japan. I love my job and absolutely love teaching kids. And I've never made a kid cry until today. So I have a student, let's call him Sam, who's 12, and he's the class clown. Now Sam loves attention and will do anything to get his classmates to notice him. Of course I have experience with plenty of goofy kids and I adore them. I let them joke around all the time unless they disturb other students. And that is exactly what Sam does. He's very disruptive and makes the other students uncomfortable to say the least. So I tried telling my boss and coworkers, but they basically said I'm on my own. Not even a call to his parents was made. So I took matters into my own hands and recently I rearranged the seating so Sam sat far away from the boys. This is because he doesn't do the same to the girls and this worked for a couple of weeks. Am I wrong for pretending to not understand Japanese and making the kid cry? Sam spent most of class complaining in a mumble voice but he didn't touch anyone but I guess he got bored of complaining. Because today, he spent most of class hurling insults at me in Japanese. The class is mostly second English learning Japanese kids, and since I'm hired as a foreign teacher, I am strictly forbidden from speaking to the kids in Japanese. Anyways, when Sam starts calling me disgusting and a stupid old lady, I admit I got upset. Because I know for a fact he would not speak that way to the Japanese staff, and I knew telling him to stop would only make him want to do it more. So instead, in a loud voice, I said, what did you say? What does that mean? Cute? You think I'm cute? Thank you. The other kids laughed a little and Sam got angry but kept trying to insult me throughout the class. So I kept doing the same thing, pretending to think the insults were compliments. And in the end, he got so frustrated, he burst into tears. Am I wrong for telling my kids I don't care if their mom dies and I don't love them? So my kids call me for the first time in over a decade to ask me out for lunch. I didn't want to go, but my wife Jane said they're extending an olive branch and to at least hear what they have to say. They immediately jumped into asking me to help out their mom with medical bills. I said no and got up to leave, but my son said even if I don't love their mom, they did. And if I love them, I definitely needed to help. So I asked, when's the last time they called? What's your half-siblings' names? And also, who they spent the last two decades worth of Father's Days with? Why should I care about a woman who took everything and left me alone while facing my death or about kids who wouldn't even see me? Not before my surgery or any point when I was dying. They were silent, so I said, I don't care about your mom, nor do I give a single shit if she dies. And I don't care how bad her dying hurts you guys. 
because I care about you guys as much as you care about me, not in the slightest. 